Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 84. Today we'll talk about masks and unfortunately having to worry about flattening the curve again, uh, plus the problems of misinformation combined with political enablers, which is why I think we're stuck with this for yet another round. So, you know, one of the things people keep forgetting is that public health interventions are like Swiss cheese. No one thing is ever going to be good enough. So vaccines by themselves, especially with as infectious as Delta is, is probably not going to be good by itself yet. Masks by themselves, yes, they're helpful. They're not perfect, but that's one of the layers you have to need use. There's layers and layers you have to put on top of these things. And you can't just pick one layer and go with it. You got to have multiple layers and you got to get them all working together. At the end of the day, it's how much spread is going on tells you how effective they are. And so we need to get people to understand this is more than one variable. Uh, so we can stop the pandemic. So the most frustrating thing for me and a lot of others is we actually know how to stop it. We actually have all the tools we need right now, uh, but we're not doing it. Uh, to stop the pandemic, you need to vaccinate probably at least 80 to 90% of the population. Uh, we need a vaccine verification system with a negative test option for those who can't or won't get vaccinated. And this is necessary. This should be necessary to go to a school, concert, restaurant, get on a plane, whatever. Uh, we've always had vaccine verification systems. This is nothing new. Uh, you've, uh, most of parents have been filling out those vaccine things for school camps and going to school uh, you know for a while and you know, rotary youth exchanges working with last couple of years we've had to have a yellow fever vaccine to go to brazil for example having a vaccine verification system is nothing new and that's why we got rid of the most pandemics or a lot of other a lot of other infectious diseases in the past and for now we do need masks again and in common and closed crowds until community spread is low enough and so a couple months ago this wasn't necessary now it is because people didn't do what they needed to do so we need a directive health measure today uh, on indoor masking uh, we need rapid testing contact tracing and isolation we gave up on that we, we have no testing strategy at either the local or state level again now and so again without these things in place we're not going to stop the pandemic now, so vaccinations, this is Lincoln Lancaster County. You'll notice that only in the above 65 population do we have in that 80 to 90% plus uh, range vaccinated. So all those other groups, uh, age groups, you're gonna see rampant spread over the next uh, few weeks. And unfortunately, a lot more deaths and a lot of hospitalizations because we're nowhere near the vaccination we need, rate we need to stop this thing. Uh, we need that vaccination verification system, which is already in place. You know, my wife and I, we went through this. So uh, we had a, a negative testing system in place because they didn't have the vaccine verification. They were just getting it started. We did this. It worked perfectly fine. We had it on our app. We presented our phone to check in the hotel. It works fine. Uh, University of Nebraska is doing it with the schools. The state of New York is doing it. It's being used all over the world. This is the system we need in place if we want to get past this pandemic and go back to normal again. Uh, and then we're going to need some mass, uh, some vaccine mandates. And so uh, you're, you're starting to see a company after a company, organization after organization, even the Pentagon. So uh, military, that's a lot of people who are going to get vaccinated now. Uh, it gets a lot easier, obviously, once we get full FDA approval, which we expect within the coming weeks. Uh, and so I think this will help boost our vaccination rates quite a bit. And so I think it's going to be it's just a matter of time before companies and probably schools as well start mandating vaccines. It's just a, uh, but I think don't think that will happen until after full FDA approval. So we'll see when that happens. So stopping a bad pandemic, we get all these things in place. This is how we stop it. And so people will say, well, how will we know we stop it? Give me an objective measure. Well, we've had the objective measure. It's just that nobody's using it. Uh, and it's basically rates of spread. So uh, this summer at the end of June, I thought we might actually be done with this. I thought we could have started schools without masks. But unfortunately, when, when the CDC said people who have been vaccinated can't, don't have to wear masks, all the people not vaccinated also stopped wearing masks. And that's why we're here. It's the people who were dishonest. People who were not vaccinated also took their masks off. That's why we're here right now. And so that's why we need some type of verification system because the honor system literally doesn't work. And here's the numbers. Uh, and so essentially here in Lincoln, Lancaster County, and I, unfortunately we don't have the rates like this for the rest of the state because Governor Ricketts decided to hide it all. Uh, we've been red for more than a week. Uh, yes, our risk dial from the health department says yellow, but that's not a measure of coronavirus risk. That's a measure of political will. We've been red for a while. And if we want to get back to no masking again, we need to get back down to blue. And until that happens, we need indoor masks. Uh, so why haven't we stopped the pandemic yet? Well, basically it's rampant misinformation plus political enablers. One by itself wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem if we didn't have so many political enablers, enablers. And you need to either vaccinate or wear a mask. You can't have it both ways. You either pick one and this needs to be enforced because people will be dishonorable and not pick one. And the other thing people keep forgetting, a pandemic decision is, is both an I and a we discussion. So we had so many people testifying in the school board saying, I want to pick for my, my kid. Well, you're not picking for your kid. You're picking for somebody else's kid when you choose not to wear a mask. That's the core problem that they don't seem to understand. Uh, so yeah, so we had, you know, it was almost like the Jerry Springer show last night at our school board meeting, but this is happening everywhere. Uh, there's great information on this. So the Dr. Stock video, uh, uh, moving around, I put links to this notes section, but, uh, uh, go to, go to this guy's, uh, 
basically rebuts it all. The guy doesn't make anything that has uh, uh, much evidence behind it. You know, his quote, I can also say there was no, no part of this whole thing that was completely truthful or accurate. And the good data is out there. So for example, I've also got the link to James, James Zoller's colleagues at UNMC put in this executive summary with uh, links to every article. So when people say there's no studies, well actually, yeah, there's a whole, there's pages of studies saying this works. So I've got this link and you can go to this and look at the UNMC evidence behind masking and safety in schools. It's a nice, it's a pretty concise summary and it, it nails it. Uh, and the evidence, yes, it is there. Um, so political enablers, uh, I, it, it baffles me that you have a, a couple Republican governors who just keep doubling down on a failing uh, proposition. I, they, they've still bought into the Great Barrington Protocol, which or declaration, which has been proven wrong over and over again. They don't seem to be able to change their minds, unfortunately. Uh, but if you have. So, for example, you have Governor uh, Asa Hutchinson from Arkansas and uh, Senator Bill Cassidy, GOP senator from Louisiana. Uh, Bill Cassidy is a physician, so he actually does understand this stuff. And they've said, yeah, local officials should have control to put these mask, mask, uh, mandate ban uh, mask mandates back in place again. So you have some uh, Republicans out there who are following the evidence and have read the evidence and are, and are doing the right thing. We just need more of them to quit enabling the disinformation. Uh, and, you know, the pandemic decisions are both I and we. And so that masking thing. So if if you choose not to wear a mask, you're not making that decision for use. You're making that decision for the other person. And so the most important important person to be wearing the mask is the potentially infected person, so that you don't infect somebody else. That's why you saying I don't want my kid to have to because I'm making a decision for my kid. You're not making the decision for your kid. You're making the decision to the kid that's sitting next to them because your kid could be infectious. And so I wear my mask to protect you. You your wear your mass to protect me that's the fundamental misunderstanding of some of these individual responsibility people they don't understand how this works uh, and they keep citing articles so here in the last week I keep getting emailed articles well this proves that this is a risk for kids well the harp carbon dioxide thing is not true uh, and so person sent me this and first of all they don't the person didn't really understand what kind of an article this was this is not a peer-reviewed re, full peer-reviewed research article it's a research letter these are something things that are usually rapidly produced to raise an issue and then people hopefully will follow up on it and do a full study this was only on 45 kids so it wasn't a very big study uh, but then what pretty quickly after it was put out there, people were pointing out that there are a lot of uh, problems with the methodology used. They weren't even probably using the right equipment. And then, of course, in the intro of the article, they actually re reference a debunked uh, uh, political article out of Germany as, as, the, as part of the initiative for this. So it kind of raised a lot of red flags. It's now been retracted because it's, it, was, it was fundamentally flawed and it had a political agenda behind it in the first place. So it's not, it's been formally retracted from JAMA. Uh, so I sent that back to the person. He sent me yet an article. So well, what about this article? Well. Okay, this article. Well, first of all, I'll point out it's in 10 people. 10 people is not a study that proves anything. 10 is, is a pilot study. Pilot studies are designed to raise an issue and then hopefully have a, the real study done that would be big enough to actually prove something wrong or right. But even in this 10 healthcare workers that said the N95 mask did not oppose any important physiological burden after an hour of use, uh, they did mention that there was a possibility of some PCO2 rising. But that was just a possibility, and that what this would do is this would prompt a full study. Well, we don't need to do this study because this Lily study is, re is replicated every day, day in and out in our hospitals. Um, all of our doctors and nurses, respiratory therapists that are working mandatory overtime, 8, 10, 12, 14 hour shifts, taking care of ventilated people, working hard, doing very complex tasks, they've been wearing these masks and they're doing just fine. And some of them have even posted you know, pictures of themselves at the end of the shift with their monitors on them, proving that no, this isn't causing problems with my oxygenation or CO2. So we don't need to do this study because it's literally being replicated every day at Bryan Hospital, for example. Uh, and then this bombshell that came out and this Marty McCarty is a pretty reckless guy. So, you know, a couple things, if I were going to write an, uh, an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, I think I'd at least make sure I have my math would correct and not have it require a correction within the first day. So just pointing that out for you. Uh, this guy, yes, he's at Johns Hopkins, but he's in the, he's more of a, he's a transplant surgeon, not a public health expert. Um, and yes, Johns Hopkins does have some cachet. That's where I got my public health training. That doesn't make me infallible. So just because he's at Johns Hopkins doesn't automatically make him right. Uh, the other thing is he doesn't have a very good track record. So six months ago, he wrote another op-ed saying that we'd be at herd community by April and everybody should tell the good news that we're all done with this pandemic. And obviously that was wrong. So he doesn't have a very good track record either. Uh, so keep that in mind. And so you do, people need to say just because it was in the Wall Street Journal as an opinion piece and he's at Johns Hopkins, that, that doesn't prove much at all, honestly. Uh, expertise is based on your experience. People who've actually done this kind of work day in and day out. 
So if you look at the UNMC playbook pushed out, I'll point out a couple of people. Carrie Simonson down there in the right lowest corner, she's the chair of pediatrics and a pediatric infectious disease. She does this kind of stuff day in and day out. This is the kind of expert that knows what we're talking about. And on the bottom left, you have Ali Khan and James Lawler, who have probably some of the, mo the most pandemic expertise in, in the state, if not sometimes the country, actually. Uh, so much so that Ali Khan actually wrote an art, a book five years ago basically predicting the next pandemic and that would likely be an influenza or COVID. This is a guy who's been all around the world and has, has dealt with any outbreaks of everything from anthrax to uh, Ebola. Uh, this is a guy who knows how to handle pandemics. And then you had the Michael Lewis book. Well, James Lawler is one of the main uh, characters in that book. He was one of the people that wrote the government's pandemic response plan under the uh, with, with Carter Mesher and others uh, during the Bush administration. So this is a guy who actually knows how to do this stuff. So why are we listening to them instead of people like McCrary and, and, and Meissner. Uh, the other thing is, you know, although Meissner, it's sort of a rambling article on, on many aspects, and they do get some things right. So like, for example, they point out that we need mandatory vaccinations uh, in teachers, uh, which I think is ironic because the people raising this are the very people who all, not only don't want masks, they also don't want mandatory vaccinations. So maybe they didn't read the whole article. Uh, I do agree with them that it, it's, it's sad that our kids are having to do all this extra stuff. It is, there are some concerns with kids wearing masks, sure, uh, but, the alternative uh, is, is much worse. Uh, we are get, we're at a flattening curve scenario. And so yes, the kid may have some anxiety with masks, but not near the anxiety they'd have if their mom or dad died. In the last two weeks, we'd have three uh, parents die in our hospitals at leaving kids uh, with single parents, not two parents, because of coronavirus. And you have to look at a risk versus risk. I'd much rather, I'd rather much rather have an anxious kid for a little bit than a kid who now is a dead mom or dad. Uh, and so we're at the flattening the curve scenario. So here in Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, we don't have state good state rates, unfortunately. If you look over the right, uh, the last state update's August 4th, so it's a week old and already, unfortunately. But uh, health, Lincoln, Lancaster is pretty much real time. And you can see that our hospitalization rates were already hitting uh, January time. Uh, our hospitals are full. I've had multiple conversations with uh, hospitalists and communications with our, with our critical care docs. They're full. They got no extra room right now. And the nurses are already working mandatory over time. We can't, we can't handle more. And unfortunately, this is on its way up. Uh, this uh, from a, a hospitalist I know uh, posted on Facebook. I coached a physician friend on Tuesday in a town 60 miles away out of management of six patients that need an ICU bed because Brian and Saney is in UMC at all full. They had no ICU beds. And hospitals are calling regularly from Kansas, Oklahoma. They're trying to ship people to Nebraska. They can't get them here because we have no room for them. Uh, we do not want to be like this. And so we're at crisis levels, unfortunately, whether people seem to want to acknowledge that or not. Uh, and it's going to get worse because those hospitalizations lag infections by, by, by at least two weeks. And so the hospitalization rate that's a problem right now is based on this infection rate, not this infection rate. So it's going to get worse the next couple of weeks. The last thing we need is unmasked concerts like a Garth Brooks concert uh, to send all our kids to school without masks and Husker games without masks. This is just going to be a disaster in the making if that's what we're going to do. So we need masks back in place. Um, you know, and the two differences that the, 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 the folks at the hospital are telling me that are different from the November and December surge, it's exactly like except for two things. One, this was all preventable. We didn't have to do this, but it was mismanagement over the summer that created this problem. And the patients are younger this time. And that's a problem. Uh, an 85-year-old who's getting that sick might, you know, they might go in hospice and not get intubated. But the 30-year-olds, they're going to pull out of the stops of that patient. That means they're going to be there a lot longer too. And like I said, we had three young parents die this past week, including a pregnant woman. Uh, this is younger people, and this is a problem. Um, and we do not want to be as bad as Florida and Louisiana. We can look to the south and see what we're looking at, looking at if we keep uh, following uh, what the, some of these folks are doing. Uh, and, you know, we could do this yet again, too. And what you're seeing over and over again, you can see the pattern here in all these states. You had the, the initial wave uh, last spring, followed by the summer as the people in the south said, oh, we're done and it's seasonal, which wasn't the case. Uh, people then thought, okay, maybe we're there. No, we had the humongous serve over the winter. Uh, and people said, oh, okay, now we're here at herd humidity, including that Macari guy, uh, only to find out a couple states like Michigan had another resurge from Alpha. And people say, well, why didn't Alpha go as much as everything? Well, I think there wasn't enough time elapsed between here and here for Alpha to be as big a problem as it was. But Delta, it's been enough surge that I think what you're seeing is that there's waning of immunity. And so despite this big surge, what you're finding out is the next one comes around another six to eight months, and now it's the other six to eight months. We could be doing this again. Is that a certainty? No. It's kind of like the investors say that, you know, past performance is, isn't no guarantee of future performance. But on the other side of that, though, past performance is the best predictor of future performance. And so we could have another wave in another six to eight months unless we get everything in place again. So this time, let's get everybody vaccinated. Let's keep the masks in place until we get things under control. Let's put the verification system in place and let's get the rapid testing and contract takes in place so we can be done with this because I'm tired of this too. 
So, you know, hopefully this is helpful to you. It's my summary as of today. Uh, this is what I do for a living, so you know that I actually do have a job and I'm gainfully employed in what I do. Uh, but this isn't necessarily my, uh, the pins of these organizations. These are mine. Uh, but hopefully this is helpful to you.